free. The Lord has indeed made us to be his own. Oh, God, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We bless you, O oh God, our Father. We exalt you, O oh God, our Maker. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We bless your name, O oh Lord. As we confess you, we confess you that you are the Lord. You are the Lord. We bless your name, O Lord. As we confess you that you are the Lord. Brother, I want you to continue in blessing the name of the Lord because he is the Lord of all. He is the Lord of all flesh. Oh, Father, we thank you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, because you are a God that has brought us out. He said he brought us out from the mary clay and set our feet on the rock to stay. I want you to thank God for the salvation of your soul. I want you to thank God for the salvation of your soul this night. Thank him. Thank him. The Bible says it is not of him that will it or of him that run it, but it's of God that showeth mercy. Yes, Let's give him praise for saving us. Yes, while we were yet sinners, the Bible says he sent his son to die for us. That is the love that he has for us. The, the love that draws us closer to himself. The love that made him to give his only begotten son. Let's just worship that God. Let's just worship him today. Let's worship him tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Rainbow sister Rocky Massa, Rainbow Babushke Susoturo Bushke, Rainbow Babu sister Rubushke, Zeke Yakim Mopuske, Zeke Pupuru Babuske, Neleba, Reki Mama Puruko Popo Sindelia, Rainbow Babu Sekeleba. In Jesus' name we have worship. In Jesus' name. The other part of our prayer this evening, I just want us to quickly open to the book of Psalm. 91, Psalm 91, Psalm 91. If you can put it for me in Amplified, I want us to read that verse 1 together, and then we are going to pray. Psalm 91, Amplified. Okay, let's read it together, church. One, two, go. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no enemy can withstand. Amen. Amen. I know by now, we've all had all series of things going on in the world out there, uh, Omicron variant, whatever it is, but I want us to be rest assured of something. In as much as we are dwelling in the secret place of the most high. It says we shall do what shall remain stable, fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. I want us to take that prayer for ourselves that Lord, this time I continue to stand in that secret place of the most high because that is what will keep us. That is what has been keeping us. And let's begin to pray that God, I'm not going to depart. I'm not going to stay away. I'm not going to walk out of this secret place. I will continue to dwell in this secret place so that I will be able to stay secure. That scripture says that no power of the enemy can withstand. No virus, no power of the enemy can withstand you. As long as we stand firm, as long as we stand in that secret place of the Most High, that is the prayer you are going to pray that, God, I refuse to walk away. You are going to pray with that determination and say, Lord, Lord, as all this noise, some persons is being, is being um, propagated all around, that I refuse to be a candidate. We are not going to be, we are not going to be part of the statistics of those that this pandemic is going to be taken away. Let's just pray. 
Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray that God, I will continue to stand in that secret place. I will continue to stand in that secret place. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I will continue to stand in that secret place. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I will continue to stand in the secret place of the Most High. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 2 say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, on him I lean and rely and trust. Brethren, pray for yourself that you will continue to rely on God. The Bible says that woe unto him that put his trust in man. <laughs> woe unto him that put his trust in man. I will continue to put my trust on you, God. I will continue to look up unto you. As the psalmist says, I will look up unto the hills from whence come it my help. That you will continue to look up unto God for our help. We continue to trust in him because he is the Lord. He is our refuge and is our strength. Let's pray tonight that God you continue to be my strength. I will not, my heart shall not be, my heart shall not grow weary in spite of the, of the news all around. I will continue to stand because you are God, you are God, you are God, that is my refuge. Verse 4 says that he will cover you with his pinions. Another scripture, another uh, version says that he will cover you with his feathers. It says, and under his wings shall you trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness are a shield and a buckler. Brethren, pray for yourself tonight. Just pray for yourself tonight before we go into the world and say, Lord, cover me with your feathers. As you have promised in this world, continue to cover me, continue to be a cover over myself, over my family, over all our loved ones, over the church. Let's pray that the Lord will continue to cover us in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Maruto in the name of the Lord Jesus. Brethren, let's In Jesus' name we have prayed. Lastly, we are going to pray tonight using verse 3 of that scripture. It says, For then he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. The Lord has kept this promise to date. We are going to extend that upon ourselves, upon our families, upon our loved ones, upon the church of God as a whole, that, Lord, you will continue to deliver us. You will continue to shield us from this deadly pestilence. Let's begin to pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for your children. Pray for your family. Pray for the church. That, Lord... As you have said in your word, you will deliver me. You will deliver me from the snare of the fowler. You will deliver me from the noise and pestilence. You will deliver my family. You will deliver the church. Our to see Bethel Assembly, all our members, all our brethren, the Lord will continue to deliver us. The Lord will continue to shield us from the noisome pestilence. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh Lord, we pray that Lord Almighty, it doesn't matter. It says a thousand shall fall at your left and your right. It says you shall only behold with your eyes, but you shall not be partaker. Lord Almighty, it does not matter what is happening. We are not moved by what we see. It does not matter what is happening. We are not moved by what we see. We are only moved by your word. Your word that says that the Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my refuge. The Lord is my refuge. Your word that says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is saved. We run into that name. We run into that strong tower as a family. We run into that strong tower as a church tonight. And we say we are saved. We are delivered. We are kept 
Save her from this noisome pestilence. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Marika Talibushke, Rika Telina Wosekalia, Barubo Susoturo Bushkin Deleba, Rika Tatalibo Sistoruba, Rika Nimama Bosestolia, Jake Tururibaba, Rika Talin Deleboskeba. In the next one minute that I have, I want us to commit to nice study into God's hands. It's going to be another wonderful experience. Another wonderful time of sharing, of dining at the feet of the master. Let's pray that God, as we have come tonight, that you will feed us. That you will feed us. You will feed us with your word. And we shall be satisfied. The Bible says that the entrance of his word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. Let's pray that our hearts will be made simple tonight. To be able to receive the light and understanding of the word of God. Let us pray for the vessel that the Lord has prepared. That you will look beyond the vessel. And we look beyond the person. And begin to see God in him. That the Lord that has giving him this assignment tonight. We walk through him. We are going, not going to hear any word of man or any logic reason of man, but we are going to hear expressly from the mouth of, the, or from, 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 the, from the spirit of God tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's pray that this meeting tonight, the power of the Lord will move. As his word is being shared, that our lives will not remain the same. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Almighty. Blessed be your name, Lord. Blessed be your name, Lord Almighty. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, O oh God. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father, we thank you again tonight. Thank you for bringing us here to be fed by your word. Thank you, O God, for preserving us, O God. Thank you for the grace that you have given unto us. Lord Almighty, as we go into your word tonight, we pray that you will speak expressly unto our spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord Almighty, we ask, O God, that you, O oh God, will visit each and every life watching online or, or here in person. That, Lord, at the end of tonight's meeting, we shall all be refreshed in our spirits. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Almighty. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to church. For those of us that are here, for those of us that are home, hello. You can't respond, but God sees your heart. Welcome to church as well. So um, for those that are here, just smile at the person sitting by your side. If the person is far away, smile across. I know you can't see the face, but they say the eyes smile too, right? So we can see the eyes, so we shouldn't feel... We are in the presence of God. We are here to study God's word. <coughs> All I have done is put together the outline. We are really just here to walk through it together according to God's word. Are we on the same page? Are we ready to move forward? Okay, <coughs> so let us say a quick prayer. Eternal Rock of Ages, we want to say thank you for this evening. We want to say thank you for bringing us here together. We want to say thank you. We are here by your strength. We know we are not here on our own accord. We ask of you as we go through your words, Spirit of the living God, teach us, God, in the way we, we will understand. As our faces are different, God, our understanding is different. Teach each and every one of us here and at home, God, distance is no barrier with you. Teach us, God, according to your word, in Jesus' name. 
so I in a few minutes, um, the man of God who shared the out outline, yeah, to every one of us, it's just been delayed at the printer right now, but we'll get it. But just so that we can move forward before that time, um, today's topic is generosity. That's the title, generosity. So I'm pretty sure we've heard that word before. We've talked about it several times. There is hardly any Sunday that the conversation about generosity does not come up. We've heard about this. We've talked about it. So we will just be going through generosity as a, as a topic. And really, the, the, the idea here is to start off by really defining what generosity means, what our understanding of generosity is, then go through why should we be generous, why, what's the point? Um, <clears throat> what should we be generous with? Okay, so who should we be generous to? Um, how can we be generous and what happens when we are generous? So hopefully when we go through this topic, we would be able to answer these questions again. What is generosity? Why should we be generous? What should we be generous with? Who, who should we be generous to? How can we be generous? And what happens when we are generous? Are we okay so far? Any questions? Any? I don't get that part. Don't be shy. Raise your hand and you know, we'll talk about it. And so we'll start off by defining what generosity means. I will say what I, I found when going through the topic, but I'd like to just get our understanding of that first off. And if you're home, you have a question, you want to contribute, you're totally free to do so. But if you're here, just I just want to get our understanding of what we think generosity means. If you've never heard the word before, that's fine. But if you've heard the word generosity, to be generous, you've heard that before. You have, a, you have an understanding of it. You have a context in your head. When you hear the word generosity, what comes to your mind? Anybody? To be generous. If Okay, I will start by saying, have we heard that word before? Generous, generosity, generous. To, have you heard that before? Okay, so but when you first heard it or when you hear it now, what crosses your mind? Okay, go ahead, please. Generosity is the act of being um, large-hearted in giving, in sharing, in sacrificing. To be large-hearted, to give, to share, to sacrifice. I like that word, sacrifice. Anybody else? Large-hearted, um, give, sacrifice. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. So um, what I put together here was... Um, to be generous, it's, I mean, generosity is from the act of being generous, right? That's pretty much straightforward. But it just, to give freely, to give freely. And I was thinking, what does that even mean? It, it, so the, the definition says, um, showing a readiness to give something, okay, more than it's necessary or expected. So the reason why I asked the question of what we thought generosity was, was to be on the same page. So you, you, you can give, but not give generously. Okay? So you can give, you can give just the baseline, what is required of you. You know, so we, I won't assume. So how many of us are working here? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of us are students here? Okay. Perfect. So, have we? Do we understand where there is a passing grade for a course? There is a passing grade for those of us that are students. And so, for those of us that are working, there is the minimum expectation at work. There is the minimum that if you do it, okay, you have done your job. But you're not gonna get. You're not gonna get bonus for doing just the baseline. Right, so and and for school, you know, I I recall when I was in school, and then mm, I took a course, and then I had a lecturer say, "Listen, if you get this grade, you're gonna fail the course." I'm like, I, "That's not true," because I he says, oh, "No, he says, oh, if you got a 
B, was it a B minus or so? You're going to fail the course. I said, but that's not true. That after B minus, there is a C. He says, no, 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 no. That all of those don't count. The baseline is a B. That's the best. It is true those other grades exist. But you need to go beyond that to be able to pass. You could pass generally, but to pass this course, you need to go beyond. So where I'm going to is that you can give the baseline. But the thing with giving the baseline is that it doesn't make you special. Everyone's given the baseline. That's why they are there. The truth is that as a student, if you, if you, if you pass at a grade that's below what's required, you'll be probably asked to leave or have to repeat the course or fill the course or something, right? So the fact that you're still a student, they're meaning that everyone that's still a student in that whole school is given the baseline. And when we're, if you put it back to context here, when you're giving and you're given the baseline, well, that's okay. But you know what? That's what every other person is giving. So, but then, when you give generously, you give beyond the baseline, beyond what is expected, beyond what people will call necessary. <coughs> and the third one said, to show kindness towards others. And, and so, <coughs> when I saw the part where it said to give generously, I started asking myself, give what? So, like... <coughs> I know the first thing that comes to our mind is, yeah, yeah, money. Uh, yeah, that's part of it, let's be honest, right? So, but give what? So uh, the first thing that question I put here was, you know what, let's go through the Bible and really see what it meant to give when people say they gave. Let's see what that means. So the text today will be taken from Exodus 35, from 4 to 12. I don't know if... It's going to be up there, but I'll pull up my Bible anyway. Exodus 35. Exodus 35 from verse 4 to 12. Okay, I don't think there's anyone there. Okay, <coughs> I guess I'll read because... Yeah. Oh, it's actually there. Okay, it says, And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying... This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, uh, Okay, take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and lin linen and goat hair and ram skin dyed red and badger skin and shittim wood and all for an oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense nine and onyx stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. And every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord hath commanded thee. The tabernacle, his tent, and his covering, his touches, and his board, his bars, his pillars, his socket. The ark and the staffs thereof with the mercy seat and the veil of the covering. I'll stop here. And so what I was trying to pre, this is just a bit of a background. This is where um, God has said they should build the ark. And then so recall that when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, they took a lot of things. God said, take things from your neighbor. And so what I found very interesting, I was reading that a couple of days before going through this. And what I found interesting was that God had already granted them favor in the eyes of the Egyptians before they went. So the reason I'm bringing this up is that it was not because they were too kind or too nice that made them get all of these things or the things they got from the people of Israel. It was because God had gone before them, giving them favor in the eyes of the Egyptians. And so when they had asked, they gave them, right? So now, fast forward to this point, they're making an uh, um, they ask God is saying, Bring everything that you've got, whatever you've got, everything. Bring, bring, and let's create this ark. And so, you see, he's asking, and everyone is bringing what they've got just to design this wonderful ark God has said they should do. And 
so uh, I was now going through and thinking, okay, that's pretty interesting. But when we, but when we, but when we give in church, people kind of complain too. But I don't see people. Com- they might have complained in their heart, but I don't see that there. But now we are still on what is generosity. So I, I went through the Bible. It says it's an act of giving. Generosity really is an act of giving. You cannot be, you cannot be generous just sitting down and doing nothing. That's the truth. I know that there is a place of being quiet. There is a place of having faith at your seat. But you cannot be generous. It's an act. It's not a thought. You could think about being generous. That's great. You could plan to be generous. That's great. You could talk about being generous. That's great. But the truth is, generosity is an act. Can we see Second Corinthians chapter 9 from 10 to 11? Please, Second Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 10. Thank you. He says, Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, both minister bread for food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit for your righteousness. 11. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving. If you have, uh, next time I think I'll look for NIV because this is quite... Interesting. So, but um, it's an act of giving. It's an act of sowing. And that's the truth. It's an act of sowing. It's an act of sowing. When you're, when you're generous, when y- you give, the truth is that you sow. You know, look, every time you give, you sow a seed. Every time you give, you sow a seed. And so, then it becomes, if every time you give, you sow a seed, it becomes important who you give and what you give. Does that make sense? Let me just be sure I'm not talking to myself. Because if, if you know that, if you know that, how do I put this? If you know you're doing, like, what you're, what you're doing will come back to you. If you know what you're doing will come back to you, it only makes sense, therefore, that you, you would consider what you're giving and where you're giving to. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's an act of giving, it's an act of sowing, and it's an act of kindness. Because a lot of times, generosity does not, most times it's not what is required of you. It's, a lot of times it's not what is required of you. It is what you do out of kindness. It's not what you do because you are expecting something back in return, but you, it's an act of kindness. You're giving. So... Let me just circle back to where we started from and where we are. We talked about generosity, and what we had defined was that generosity was was uh, being large-hearted, right? It was an act of giving, an act of sowing, an act of showing kindness. It is giving, showing readiness to do more or give more than is expected of you, to show kindness to others, to give freely. That's what we have said so far. Any questions? Anything we missed? Okay. So I I would go forward, uh, but before I go forward, I I just had something I put here. I said food for thought. Um, So do we think that generosity, since we have said from the beginning, we started by saying that generosity was an act, meaning that you have to do something. So you have to sow, you have to give. So all of that being said, do you think that generosity is nature or nurture so uh, is it natural for people to be generous or is it a habit that people learn or they are growing to it or something it's actually a question just think about it there are people who are generous there there are times we have been generous before there are people so being generous do we think that it's something you're born with (coughs) so naturally you're generous or is something that you can learn over time and then you learn to be generous. Okay. It's <coughs> it's both nature and nurture. Okay. There are people who are born, you know, with the gift. The Bible actually talks about the gift of giving, right? Mm-hmm. So there is the gift of giving which you discover when you become a child of I mean, you come into the there are people who are not saved and they are generous because they are born with that gift. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but also, as children of God, the Bible lets us know in the book of Corinthians that there is the gift of giving. So that is a consciousness that you now come into and are more enhanced when you become a child of God. But there is also the schooling of, of, of yourself as an individual based on the principles of God that you discover. The Bible says a liberal soul, uh, 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 what make it fat, right? Uh, 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 and there is he that giveth more, you know, there's he that withholdeth more than his meat and tendeth to poverty, there is he that giveth and, and, and increaseth. Proverbs. And then more importantly, there's Genesis 8.22, seed time and harvest time. So, you know, we're not doing. So as we come into, so, so if we, okay, so to summarize, sorry, there are people who are born with the gift or discover that gift as a result of their uh, coming into a relationship with Christ, but it is also expedient for all of us as children of God to learn the principles of giving. I will end with that. Thank you. Perfect. I, I like that. So, Sister Sifu, sorry. Nature of Christ in us. So, it is that nature that causes us to give, right? So, even if somebody can say, oh, I was not born with the ability to give, but the biggest giver is living inside of you. So you have the, and is your nature, right? Christ in us. So that nature, even if it was not your nature in your old man, but because Christ is now living in you, it's your nature, which is why Christ came and he said that the biggest commandment I'm saying to you is to love your neighbor as yourself. You cannot love your neighbor as yourself if you're not willing to give to your neighbor. Even the Bible says to do good, right? So... Doing good is also giving, so it shows that that nature is in us as believers. Anybody else? Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, let me also add that talking about giving, uh, as you know, other speakers have said, uh, you have people who are not Christians, but they are very generous. And so generosity in itself, it's an attribute. It's something that uh, anyone can actually, you know, have within them. But now, when you are now a child of God, what makes the difference is what are you generous, you know, about? Who are you generous towards? What you have that you are generous about, what exactly you know, are the instructions that you receive from God, you know, to make you to be that generous. And at the same time, when you are now a Christian, that generosity, it's you, you see it, it's not about you. It's about others. And we all know that the scripture is, you know, very clear that even when you're generous, he says, don't let your left hand, you know, know what the right hand is doing. It's a little bit different, you know, from a presence in a world where, yeah, every act of generosity is, you know, uh, on CNN and, you know, all over the place and, you know, things like that where people are actually cheering you and say, oh, yeah, that guy is, you know, doing this and doing that. It's more about knowing that whatever you're doing, and for whoever you're doing it for, you are doing it as unto the Lord, not to be seen of men. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just to buttress what people said, that as children of God, we are, you know, we are born again to give because that's the nature of Christ. He's a giver. But I, t I will take the other route of it is that it's a, I would say it's a habit we have to form. You know, like the old nature is greedy. It always wants to hold. It always wants to keep. But even when we become new, it doesn't just come automatically to start giving. We have to cultivate the habits. And I will use myself as an example. When I gave my life to Christ, it's something I have to learn to be a giver. It didn't come easily, but I have to cultivate it day by day that you know what? Not making anything too important for me to give. I remember one time, you know, when I started learning to give, you know, I would look at it, oh, give something, and I would just give, just like you say, you give the basic, and you keep the, this thing. And somebody's house got burnt in our church, and they said, oh, come and give. And I packed some item, and something said, 
is this what you have to give? And something was pointing me to one of my newest dress. It was challenging, but I obeyed. I gave it to her. And the ones I wanted to give before that came from my mind, I still put them and she appreciated them. A week after, exactly the material I gave her, somebody brought a brand new one on one. Anyway, the one I gave, I've worn it at least one time. And I gave it to her. Somebody bought the exact color, the same pattern as a gift. Praise God. Hallelujah. So everyone spoke beautifully. And, you know, the first speaker said generosity is both nature and nurture. Oh, okay. Just real quick so I can. Hallelujah. I just want to let us know that, you know what? The principle of giving never fails. Even if you don't have the habit, you can pray for God to help you. The Bible says, you know, the Bible says when you give, he will give back to you. And the hands of a giver is always on top. So, you know, when you give, there's no way you will not receive. But then if you don't give and you're expecting, expecting, expecting all the time, it doesn't work. Praise the Lord. That's true. And, and since I suppose say you have the life of Christ, Pastor said, <coughs> what makes you generous? Um, it's, you know, you really need to figure out why am I doing this? Am I doing it just for me, for the Spirit of God, you know? And uh, Pastor Mrs. said, it's a habit we have to form, even though we have some of these habits, you have to form it along the way. And the principle of giving and receiving never stops. So let's read uh, Proverbs 11.24. It says, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes, refreshes others will be refreshed. So um, the, the reason I had asked that question is um, a lot of people say, well, I'm not like that. And People, uh, to be on, let me be honest, I've said that a lot of times before. I'm not like, listen, I, I don't give like that. I, I like to know what, you know, we make excuses, right? And, and I did, and sometimes I do, God forgive me. But, but the truth is that it's, it's for your own, the truth is that it's for your own good. So primarily, you're giving for a different, it's not because you want to get it back. That's not why we give. Your purpose is not because if I give, look, okay, so pastor said, I give a dress, and then the next day I got it. So now you, you give a dress, and you wait at the door for two days. It's the third day, no dress. So that's not why. You give because, for the most part, so there are a couple of reasons I'd put on, but I think for one of the two the reasons I think is that, one, God asks us to give. And two, you can't even be half as generous as God, who did not withhold his only son at the time. So, well, let's go ahead. I just brought that up because we do say that a lot, you know. You know, God bless those that give. I'm not that kind of a person. You know. Like you say, you have to learn the habit. Are we good so far? I hope we are still friends. I, I didn't mean to. If you're not that, we were we similar before, but God is changing me. I'm still in the process. So, um, the, the next point I had put here was, why should we be generous? And, I, and if you want to talk about that real quick, that's fine. But why should we be generous? Why? Why? Okay, we've talked about what generosity means. We, we said freely giving more than is expected of you. We talked about what it meant to be generous to, is to show kindness. It's an act of giving, sowing. But really, why? The first reason I have here is that because everything belongs to God. Can we read Psalms 24, verse 1? Psalm 24, verse 1. Psalm 24, verse 1. Okay. I don't know that. So let me just open it on my own. Okay, it's not on this. Psalm 24, and now my phone is low. So let's do this. Just a second, Psalm 24. And if anyone's there, you can read it for sure, but I got here quickly. Okay, it says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. I'm reading the NIV version. It says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. 
For he founded it on seas and established it on the water. So even the thing you're holding so strongly belongs to God. That's why I started off with reading Exodus 35 when Moses has said, hey, bring all of these things. Let's make this. Listen, they were just coming from Egypt. Even the things they had taken, it was God that orchestrated it right. So that thing you're holding so strongly that you think you cannot afford to give. I, I think when we do that, I think it's kind of insulting to God. That, that's how I see it. And if, forgive me if I'm saying the wrong thing. But I feel it's insulting to God that... So, so we, it's like, it, it, we act like kids, right? You know how you give a kid something? I, I, rem I recall we used to have kids, around, well, I don't have my kids yet, very soon. But, so I recall, um, so you have a kid, you give him something. And now you ask the kid, give him back, he hides it behind you and says no. So, when, when, when the kid did that, I'm like, I don't understand, I just give you. I literally just give you now. I, and funny enough is that there is more from where I give it. Right, but I'm just playing and asking you. He says no. I'm like, I don't know. So that's the same attitude we give when we don't give because the thing you're holding, the hand you're using to hold it, the effort you're using to hold it, it all belongs to God. He's only just asking you to give you an opportunity to bless because he can get it from. So the, the truth is this. I, I realized something, well, a little late that, listen. <clears throat> If you don't help somebody, somebody else will. Yeah. There is no one person that your destiny is tied to. There is no one person. It is God. If one person refuses to help you, God will raise somebody else. Because there is no one person who is strong enough to stop God's work. You're not that strong. You know, so that's the thing. So if you, if you find yourself in an opportunity to give or help, and you refuse to... You know, maybe because for whatever reason, the truth is God will find somebody else. Okay. No. I think, you know what, the, um, earlier we realized that we came to this world with nothing and we'll live with nothing. And whatever we have, you know that it does not belong to you. Just, just, God just decides to pull you in charge of that. And that's the way I see it. When God lays, lays it in my heart to give someone something, even no matter how, how much I love that thing, I look at it this way that, you know what? If I don't give it, God will raise someone else, like you said, to give it to that person. Mm -hmm. And this thing does not belong to me. It belongs to God. Whatever we mm -hmm. have, it belongs to God. If God puts you in charge of it, why don't you use it wisely? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's true. God will raise somebody else. I, I, I recall there was one service that was holding, right? And so a choir director calls me and says, can you come in and leave? It is five. I look at it and I'm like, ah, it's going to take one hour drive. Before I get here, I said, no, you know, you know, ah, it's a long. He says, okay. Honestly, like a few minutes afterwards, he goes, he texts me back. I said, oh, don't worry. I found somebody else. I'm like, oh, wow. And now that was not the end. On Sunday, um, a preacher preached and start, started talking about giving. I said, ah, no. And that day I was in church. I'm like, so I could have just come so that I don't have to deal with all of these. Look, when you choose that, you will not give what you have. God will raise somebody else. And, and, and look, the good part is that we serve a merciful God. But now, this is something, blessing that could have come here where you let somebody else take it. And, the, and you had the ability to. While I was complaining, I asked myself. So I was busy complaining and, and debating with myself. And I now asked myself, I said, okay, but hold on. <clears throat> your issue is that you can't drive the car that God gave you. Or your issue is that you can't use the energy that God gave you. You're not sick, you can drive. Or what? You're too tired, you don't want to, you're not blind, you can see. So what's your excuse? So the next Sunday, I then reported myself to the, to the, to the man who said, listen, I, I just didn't go. Forgive me. But my point is this. If you really look at it, was there really, there, there are times when God is telling you no. There, there, there are times when he's not, no. There are times he's not, he has not asked you to do something. And that's true. But when he has asked you to, you have the ability to why not. Looking at the time, let me, let me continue. So why should we be generous? First, and everything belongs to God. Then second is God gave us first. Genesis one twenty eight. Can we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 28? And if, if anybody has it, you can read it. It's fine, please. 
Genesis 1, 28, somebody else should open Romans 8, verse 32. But Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the, the fish of the sea, over the fall of the air, and over everything that moveth. Why I put this verse here was that even in the Garden of Eden, when he just created Adam, he gave them dominion over the earth. So prior to even creating Adam, he created the earth Adam lived and then gave Adam dominion. So like, how is it that you can outgive God? That, so that, okay, so Romans 8.32. Any Romans 8.32? Yes, it's coming up. Yes, okay. <clears throat> he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, us all. How shall he, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So again, if you look at these two verses, he gave us Jesus Christ. But if you look even before G G giving us Jesus Christ, right at the Garden of Eden, he already gave. If he has been given even before we were created, is he not worth? the thing he's asking us to give. Praise God. Uh, I just want to throw this question out. Okay. And I know uh, most of us have, uh, at one point or the other, you know, you've had, uh, let's say maybe uh, ministers of God, you know, pastors, you know, uh, it's not specific about, let's say maybe an offering or a special giving. And someone just saying, okay, well, you have to give. And you just have to give, and you just have to give. And sometimes we feel as though we are being compelled. We are being constrained. And we are being pressured to give. Now, the question is this. When you are being asked to give by God, and you know within yourself this is what God is, you know, laid in your heart to give. Vis-a-vis -vis when you know within yourself you don't feel convinced towards that cause and someone is kind of, you know, asking you to give and, you know, how can you undo that? Because I know most of us have been in situations like that and, yes, you can now see different school of, you know, thoughts talking about, uh, well, whatever I'm giving, I've given to this and I've given to that. Why am I being, you know, compelled to do this and all that? So that's the question. I, I have a response, but I, I think I missed that part here. I saw it today. Where God tells us to give with a joyful heart, right? So you should give happily. And, and so the way, okay. Anybody wants to comment on that? Because I don't want it to look like it's, it's uh, I'm pushing. Anybody wants, anybody has a comment to that? You are asked, you, you've been asked to give. You in, in, you're in church. This is not guessing whether you're in church or not. The pastor says give. The man of God says give. But you, it's not in your heart. You're not convinced to give. That's the, the, the question. Right? Yeah, you're not convinced to give. What do you do? Yeah, like you don't, mm, no, I've given, no, 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 I'm not giving again. I'm being compelled to give. Yeah, I guess so, yeah, that you're being compelled. Maybe you think you've given enough or. I think like to me, even though I've given and they say give. And God is laying on my heart to give. I will give it without necessarily saying as if I'm being compelled. I think giving, we should not even see it as being compelled. I know but that there are some times that it could sound like that where some people come and say, oh, some men of God will say, oh, give, 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 give this, give this for your miracle, give this for your this thing. There are different perspectives to it. But if God is laying in my heart, it doesn't matter whether the pastor say give, or even though the pastor is saying give, and I might have other minutes to read, but if God is ministering to me at that time to give, I will still give it without looking at it. After I'm not giving it to that man, I'm giving it to God. And he's the one who will reward. He's the one who says in Luke 6, 38, he say give, and it will be given to you. 
a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. Even though I know people have make, are making merchandise of the ministry these days to tell people coming to prayer, bring money, is different perspective. True. Sorry. Oh, s I'm sorry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, if, for example, I mean, if I'm going by what the pastor just said, if someone said, um, okay, I'm just being very careful with the way I say this. No, okay. no. It's yeah. Okay. So, um, I can't give to him God's love. Okay. I cannot give. So when someone is saying, um, it's what I give, or if I don't give this, I don't get this love from God. If I get to that point that I'm not convinced in my heart, I would rather stop. Okay. I, I, I would just stop. Uh, I mean, sir, God if you can put the mic a little closer to your mouth. Okay. Yes. God is not man. We cannot earn anything from God by what we give. I have come to that level, and I, you know, I, I see if this is what we're going to discuss in church today. I think myself, while we talk about Bible, also always in the car, and I was just surprised that we're talking about this now. Uh, there's nothing I can give to earn God's love or to earn God's blessing. So I see that it's a privilege when I have the opportunity to give just that little that I give. So I think I can relate that to what Pastor is saying. So if I'm going to say this personally now, if I come to that level in the church or in any meeting that whatever the person is trying to say to Ginger or to, to whatever, I will stop at that point in time and I will reflect. And I think that's my understanding. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So, so we have two people at the back, then yourself, so we can go to the next topic, please. I just want to understand the question. So, Pastor said if we are convinced of giving or if we are not, sir. If you feel compared, okay. You know what? I think uh, it still depends on the level of uh, maturity. If a pastor asks you to give, if you have the convince in your heart that, okay, let me use myself as an example. Some years ago, I think I've shared this testimony before. And uh, a pastor came, that time we were at Jesus House Scarborough. And a pastor came and said, uh, the Lord said that uh, there's someone here that um, you have uh, some certain of amount of money. And God said you should bring it. To be honest with you, when I heard, I didn't, I, I, well, you know, like when a word is for you, but then you are not ready to yield. So I kind of took it in, but I didn't do anything. So what I did, I went home and I prayed about it because that money, to be honest, at that time, it was a lot for me. I saved the money to buy a property. And when the pastor came, and said, you have, so, you have uh, amount of money and you're planning to use it for something. And God said that you should bring it for um, church building. So I went home and I prayed. When I prayed, the next day I slept and I had a dream. The word that I, the dream I can't even remember, to be honest with you. The only word that I remember in my dream except the Lord built the house, deliver us at um, building in vain. So even when I had that conviction, I still didn't want to accept it. Then I called my friend and I said, oh, this is the, this is the situation. And, and this money, if you know how many years I've been saving this money, I don't think I'm ready to let this money go. And my friend said, do you like yourself? I said, yes. So my friend said, you know what? You have prayed about it. God has spoken. It's not just the word that came out from the pulpit. It's now left to you now to decide. So I prayed, and I said, God, this word is for me. I confirmed it. But please, give me the spirit to be able to let go. Because one thing is to give it. Another thing is to give it from the bottom of your heart. 
So I did it. And I'm happy today that I did it. Because if I look back and I look at what the Lord has done after that, to be honest with you, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So I th you're going to say something, Sister Juliet. Can you please pass the mic? So what I was going to say, if I understand the question, and uh, the question I understand is, if you are being compelled to give and you, you are, don't have the conviction in your heart, will you give, right? So literally, I will not give. Just like Sister Ronke said, I will not give it at that moment. Okay. I won't. I will go because I'm not convinced. And maybe I have given the, the one I know, yes, this is what I want to give. I will go home. Okay. I will not give. Thank you. So, Brother Mother, did you want to say something? or Just quickly so we can... it all together um, by saying uh, uh, first I think Bible is very clear in second Corinthians chapter 9 where it talks about you know um, each man you know each person should give as they propose in their heart not out of compulsion or grudgingly and I think my brother had said the same thing that we don't give to earn God's love uh, the limiting constraint that I would say I the way I would interpret it is whatsoever is done out of outside faith the Bible says is sin so, you know, even, and that's one. And then the second thing is that the fact that it's painful doesn't mean that it is not God or spirit led, which is the example that Sister Ronke just gave. So uh, there are times when based on a need, you know, you may feel that, you know, uh, if you look at Paul, it, to the Corinthian church, he was talking to them and saying that, you know, considering the, the ministering to, to, to considering ministering to uh, to ministers. You know, he was encouraging them that they should give just as the Macedonian church had given. However, again, back to what Sister Juliet said, if at that point in time, you feel that you are not convicted, right, then it would be best not to give because you are giving outside faith. And so there is no uh, blessing in that sense of it, right? Or, or, or rather your faith will not go with whatever you are giving, that you're giving to God. So you may need to just pause, go back, seek you know, God's faith and say, God, do you expect me to give or is this just a man trying to wring something out of me? That would be the advice. You know, confirm with God before you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, all right. So um, let me just read um, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. It says, as every man proposeth in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or out of compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I just want to wrap it up now, okay. just to be able to put context to it. Right. Now, I intentionally asked that question just to be able to stimulate, you know, different responses. Now, I want us to look at it from two perspectives. Number one, there is the actual giving, and there is a sacrificial giving. Mm -hmm. And you can also have you know, uh, the Spirit of God leading you to actually give, or you being literally compelled by someone else who just wants to take advantage of you. When we look at the case of uh, the widow of Zarephath, we're talking of sacrificial giving. This was her last meal. And then this man of God showed up, you know, and said, well, uh, I know your situation, I know your circumstances, it's your last meal, but still come and, you know, give it to me first. You know, you are giving it to the Lord, and then you can take care of yourself later. Now, we know how the story ended, but that's sacrificial giving. At the same time, this woman was convinced that this is God. Now, it's totally different from when, you know, just like uh, my brother said, uh, you know, when you are not convinced and to be honest, there are a lot of other voices out there that can speak in the name of the Lord, and they are not speaking for God. I am not going to, and just like you said, you cannot, you know, the, the love of God has been shed abroad in our heart. So it's not what I'm giving 
that will make me to now benefit from that love. I'm already loved by the Lord. And so if that giving is not from the heart, and that's what I want to equate the giving of someone who is just giving, not out of love. They're just doing it for showmanship. That reward is not coming back because you are not giving it out of love. You are not giving it to be able to, you know, bless that person. You're just showing off. On the flip side, when uh, Sister Runke said, you, are, you receive a word from the Lord, and what's the first thing you need to do? You need to go back to the law because two cannot work together except there is an agreement. And out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. And so if someone is saying, well, yeah, you have to give. If I go back to God, God will confirm that this is what I want you to do. And then I will be able to, you know, obey the voice of the Lord and go ahead. But I would rather, you know, Make sure that I please God first and not man by making sure that I go back to God to know this is what God is saying. We want to look at it from the perspective of, I know, you know, you talked about it. What also can we give? Now, we are looking at a lot of things, but we're still looking at it from the perspective of just giving money. It's not only about money. There are so many people God is asking you, I need you to give me your life. I need you to give me your time. I need you to give me your service. I need you to, you know, give me something that is, you know, uh, special to you to be able to bless others. And so there, there are so many things that we can give. And so we don't want to look at it from the lens of just, you know, giving finances. And it is a law that will never change. It's the law of sowing and reaping. When you give, you're not going to get what you give back. No, you're going to get it in multiple fold. But what we also need to understand is giving can be two ways. If you sow bountifully, that's when you're going to get bountifully. But even the seed that you sow, you better be careful that it's a good seed. Because if it is not, you're still going to reap. I'll be it, what you're going to reap would, you know, if it's not a good seed, it's still going to be multiplied. And that's where I want us to be very careful when it comes to, you know, giving unto the Lord. You have to be convinced, yes, this is from the Lord. But also make sure that where you are sowing to. There are so many people. We, we know the story of the, you know, uh, the, the sower. There are so many people that are sowing from you know, a pure heart, but they are sowing in the wrong soil. And so we, we let's stop here for today, but it, it, it gives us an idea of everything starts from your conviction, from whether this is what God is saying or not. Praise God. Okay. Going to, should I, were you going to say something so I, I could just? Yeah. So I just want to say something that, you know, like sometimes, like Sister Runke said, even when the word is coming, it takes grace to be able to discern that is God speaking. Because some people, the word could have been given and it would be meant for them without them taking any necessary action to go and pray and ask God about it. And if that was for that person and it was for the purpose, for everything God is asking us to do, there's always blessing attached to it. Even though it's not for his love, he already loves us, we know. But whenever we give, it's an opportunity. It's a privilege to give. But it takes grace for us to be able to decide that this is God speaking. And sometimes people could have heard it and give wrongly, like Pastor said, out of compulsion. I remember one time, you know, I had a huge of money. It was my wedding time, and I went to bank coming. And some people ran into me and said, oh, God said you should give this. You know, but immediately I said, ah, I said, no, get it behind me. And it's not God. <laughs> God knows I need this money for this wedding and all this and blah, blah, blah. And they said, oh, you had this issue. If you do this, that issue will be resolved. I didn't listen to them. So we have to be very careful. And, you know, when we hear a word, we should pray about it to know whether it's right or wrong. Because if Sister Runga didn't pray about it, maybe she could have missed it. And somebody else could have done it and get the reward for it. Amen. That's true. We don't give to get God's love. He loved us first, and then he gave. So, and, and quite honestly, if you feel that you're being compelled, 
you don't have to give it. Like, because at the end of the day, it's you. So because there is, the truth is, there is a very clear, because I've been in that situation, there is a very clear distinction between you feeling compelled and you feeling convinced that it's God. Like, it, I may not understand it the way you feel it, but I know that the way you would feel it would be clear to you. So if you feel compelled, you don't, you don't have to. That's my thought because uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 here says, give with, you know, with a joyful heart, cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver, not out of compulsion. So I'll just go ahead. So we only have a few more minutes. And it's, uh, I, was say, I was on the part where it says, why should we be generous? Everything belongs to God. God gave us first. God gave us so that we can give. 2 Corinthians 9, 11. 2 Corinthians 9, 11. Yes. Okay, 9, 11. Being arranged in everything to all bountifulness, which caused through us thanksgiving to God. Can we check NIV? I think this is really interesting to me. Thank you. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So God gives us so that we can give. That's so that because you have enough, so that you can have enough, and then you can give. So just so we know, is we are on why should we be generous? And... Um, Giving also increases us, so giving increases us as well. And the the final reason I have there is because he asked us to give. Can we look at Luke six thirty four? Luke chapter six verse thirty four. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? It says, even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. Oh, I think I missed that part. Hmm. Anyway, I'll check it again. So that's not the point I was trying to make. I have that, but that was not the point. But, my, but you see, he, he says, see, look, he says give. Give, it'll come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together. So give, it'll come back to you. Because he said, it'll come back to you. We see that part, but we, f we don't see the beginning. He says, give. That's the first part. We like the part where it says, it'll come back to you, good measure. Blah, 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 blah. But the first line is give. He asked us to give. So the next point here says, what should we be generous with? And that's the point you're trying to make. So what are we giving? So we started off, just to bring us to the same spot. I don't know who came in the middle. We started off by defining generosity, what it means to be generous. We said giving more than the baseline, more than the, the what is required, giving more than that, that's what it means to be generous. Not just giving, you can give but not generously, right? So, and then we said generosity was an act of sowing, it was showing kindness to God, it was an act of giving. We asked, why should we be generous? And then we said, A, everything belongs to God in the first place. God gave us first by giving us dominion over the earth, giving us Jesus Christ. God gave us so that we can be generous. Given increases us, and he asks us to give. So the next point here says, what should we be generous with? So what are we giving? We've talked about why, what it is, but what are we really giving? The first point I put here says, your possession. Possession here meaning it could be your money, it could be cars, it could be a house. Yeah, it could be anything, but that thing that God has given you control over, he has given to you, it could be that. So, um, if you read Second Corinthians chapter eight and nine, you can see the church of the Corinthians how they gave. Then, if we go back to Exodus thirty-five from verse five to nine, we would see how everyone brought their things to Moses as he had asked. So, these are one of the things that you can give. Another thing you can give it be. So another thing you can be generous with and be very careful to not say give is your time. So let's dwell on that for a few, few minutes. We have 24, I, and, and to be honest with you, as I'm saying this, I'm saying this to myself. We have 24 hours in a day. 
you don't have more than 24 hours than I have. We all have the same 24 hours, right? And so when we say give your time, so in giving your time, this could be, keep in mind, you could be giving your time to God directly by serving in his house. You could be giving your time to somebody in need of your time, whatever that need is, right? So you have the same 24 hours. So the truth is, if you lose money, say you lose money in whatever, you, 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 you entered into a business and then you lost money, you did whatever, you know that you can, something can happen and then you get the money back. You say, yes, you gave that dress, somebody gave you back. You say, yes, this is what, you, but you know, but when you lose time, you can never get that back. When time passes, it's passed. You can make time for the same thing tomorrow, but that time is past. You cannot get it back. It's one of those things. So a lot of times we don't realize that sometimes even your time could be more valuable than the possession. If you read, so if you read that same 35, somewhere towards the end, you see that after all that giving, some people were required to put in their skill and their time to, to craft these things. We do not realize the value of our time for the most part. And so we just assume when we give, and we, I dropped my offering on Sunday, I'm good. Next week Sunday, that's fine. But our time matters a lot. And, and the truth is that I'm, I'm stopping here for a bit because sometimes God needs our time. He needs our time. The time you spend with him in the day, maybe in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, that it's not just coming, it's not just working in the house because you sing in the choir, oh, I give him five minutes. No, the time you spend with God. And there are people who need your time, genuinely. There are people, it, it I don't, I'm trying to not digress, but it helps to take two minutes in your day to call that friend you don't see that often to say, hi, how are you? How was your day? How are you doing? Are you good? It helps. That's like two minutes of your time in the day. You never get that back, but you sow that into somebody's life. Okay? So spending that time with the Lord, spending that time to give, so that's something you can give as well. We can also give our talents, our gifts to the Lord. There are tons of gifts that the Lord has given to us. So can we look at Exodus 35 verse 30? I hope I've got that one right. Exodus 35 verse 30. Then Moses said to the Israelites, see, he says, see, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Or, of the tribe of Judah. Just go ahead, the next verse, 31, I think, there should be 31 there. Ooh. Okay, and he has filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, with all kinds of skills. I'll, I'll stop there. So there's, if you look, the, he was calling somebody who God has given wisdom, knowledge, in all kinds of skills. Multi, there are multiple skills that you learned along the way. There are multiple things that you were born with inherently that you developed along the way. It, it's so, you see, I used to tell somebody that I don't, I, I was talking to someone, I said, I don't understand how people do not put in the time to do something. So listen, the energy you had, the time you had, the resources you had to learn a skill, God provided all of those for you. The people who taught you the skill, God was there. The strength to go through, even, you know, I was, ask, I was trying to study recently, and I'm asking myself, I could... When I was a student, I could read. I'm telling you, I could leave the house in the morning. I'm not back till night and because I'm studying. And now, just to put, I don't know, 45 minutes, it's, such, it's so difficult. I, listen, yo, you guys are trying. I'm telling you the honest truth. You're trying. Like, it's just to put in 45 minutes. I've not done 20 minutes and then the, eyes, the sleep comes. And now, even if the, and then you drink coffee for the sleep to go, it's not even, you're not understanding anything. And, and, but I used to tell myself, then I realized something that even the ability to study at that time, God provided. You know, there could have been multiple distractions that he put to go sideways just so that I could study. And now I'm thinking, you know what, God, I apologize for assuming that it was my own, I was being smart. No, it was your blessing. So even that skill might be, 
you, you could say, I don't think so. I'm not in the, no, no, it's not just that. There are multiple things you have. The, and there are people within your locality, your church or around you that need help with that, right? There are things you can give. I'm looking at the time we have 30 seconds. You can also give wisdom, words of wisdom, words of wisdom. There are times you some people are just, you see how Solomon was, some people, oh, sorry, we have one minute and change, sorry. Some people are wise, some people are smart. And so when, you, when you're wise, it's not the opportunity to lord your wisdom over everybody else. Help other people, you know. And help other people. Help. The, the wisdom was not just because you. If, even Solomon, we know God gave him wisdom, right? Help people. And then one, the last thing you could, I, I will say so that I can stop here is you could also give information. You may not be giving money. You may not be giving um, gifts. But you could have information that somebody else needs. Don't sit on it. Share it. Share the information because you see where you are now is a result of the information you got from different people to make the move to where you are. And those people God brought to your life so that you could use that. Now that you are where you are, help those that are not there as much as you can. I know that, you know, all the be careful, uh, but where, where you can, where you can, and you have God leading you help. You could give information as well. And my time is up. I still had like three more or four more. I was going to go through who we should be generous to. So who are we giving to? How can we be generous? Um, what happens when we are generous? And, and, and a, a third part I threw in there where I thought, saw it was given with wisdom. Right, so it's part of what we talked about. But what do we? How do we give with wisdom? Where you know you're giving and you're not giving in that situation where you're throwing the money away in the in the wrong soil. And my time is up. If we can continue this by next Wednesday, next Bible study, we will. Otherwise, um, that would be the end. So let's just wrap up in prayers before Pastor comes over. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your word, for the entrance of your word brings life. God, we want to say thank you. We know that you have spoken to us today in, in, in the capacity that we desire, that we need. Elohim, as we go, teach us to go, to study according to your word, to do according to your word, God, so that, God, we are reproducing what we have learned today. God Almighty, we will not fall victim of those who are trying to take advantage of us. We will give according to your word, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed tonight? And I know for as many of us, uh, who have come to fellowship with the Lord, we're talking about giving. And I want you to know that the time that you are spent in the house of God is actually a seed. It's a seed that you have sown. You've actually, you know, given your time to the Lord. But I also want to emphasize that whatsoever it is that you give, just like our teacher told us, whether it's your time or it's your talent, you know, information, whether it's a material or money that you give, it's still clear that whatsoever you give, God will give you back a multiple fold. And he did talk about, you know, uh, who should we give to, you know. And he was not able to actually, you know, uh, get to that during the study. But I want us to know that there are different people that you can give to can give to the work of God. You can give to neighbors around you, the less privileged. You can give, you know, your time, your talents to help others. You can give to the work of God. You can give to men of God. The most important thing is this, you know, talking about giving, is for you to understand the reason why you are giving. Just so that someone else is not going to convince you or to twist, you know, the reason why you think you are giving. Because people would say different things. And especially talking about giving to God or giving to the work of God or giving to men of God. But you need to be convinced why you are doing what you are doing. 
because there are so many, you know, uh, school of thought out there. But when you are convinced of what God asks you to do, it will not matter whether someone is saying, oh, why are you giving to that church or why are you giving to, you know, uh, this man of God or why are you wasting your money? No, everyone's conviction is totally different. But when you obey what the scripture says, that's when you are going to receive the blessing that follows obedience. There is E that scatter, yet increase. The Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. Uh, before we bring the service to an end, just to remind us, by God's grace, this coming Saturday is a Christmas carol. Amen. Is someone excited? Uh, we'll be meeting here, by God's grace, from 5 p.m. All our children, you know, the, the toddlers, the preteens, different age groups, even the teens, they have various presentation. Uh, please, let's come and let's come and celebrate the graced gift that God gave us, the gift of his only begotten son. So let's come together and let's just come and celebrate the reason for this season. And I can assure you that, yes, there, is, there are a lot of gifts on that day as well for all our children. Uh, the Lord bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Uh, before we share the grace tonight, if you also want to give your offering, if you are joining us online or you are in person and you want to give, the offering basket is at the back. And for those joining us, you can send your uh, gift, whether it's offering or tithe or any form of donation to finance at rccdbetelassembly.org. Shall we rise up? And let's take this word of prayer. In that Luke 6, 38, it says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Not what you give that you will receive. But it says, good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And there are also times in which it is your gift, it is your seed that will speak for you. We know the story of Dockers. It was a seed, a giving that spoke for her in the day of reckoning when, you know, she passed away. And other widows lifted up their voice to heaven and said, no, this woman cannot die because a seed has impacted life. I want you to pray for yourself and ask God to remember you. Remember my seed. Remember the time that I've invested into your service. Remember every of my giving, financial, material, the time that you have you know, spent for the service of God. The time you have used to pray for others, that you have used to share the love of Christ with others. I want you to pray and say, God, remember my gift. Let them come out for a memorial, O oh God. According to your word, seed time and harvest time shall not cease. Remember my seed and bless me abundantly. Bless me exceedingly. That I will not lose my reward. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Father, we appreciate you tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you tonight to fellowship, to share your word, and to be able to learn at your feet. Holy Spirit, I'm praying that for every of my hearer today, you will grant us the grace, not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers in the name of Jesus. I ask, Father, Lord, that you will open our eyes of understanding and you enlighten our spirit, man. And for as many, oh God, that still don't understand the reason why they need to obey the commandment to give, that, Father, you will grant them understanding in the name of Jesus. Are there any one of us, Lord, who have been sowing and they are asking you, oh God, for a remembrance? I pray that, Lord, today you will remember them. You will remember their seed, their sacrifices, and you will bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. We want to thank you for the seed of your only begotten Son, Jesus, wherein we have been saved, delivered, sanctified, and brought into the household of faith. Lord, we thank you for this sacrifice. We are eternally grateful unto you. And so, Father, as we come together on Saturday to celebrate this gift, 
I pray you will go ahead of us. And you will, oh God, Father, visit everyone that will come. You will impact our life in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. I mean, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. And all the days of our lives we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you all. Have a good night.